What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm joined by my very special guest, TikTok tattoo king himself, John Nelson. Tony, not going easy on him. That's how I like it. He's gonna be helping me break down artist critiques today, so let's see what you guys sent in. Oh boy. Once again, welcome back. Before we get started, if you guys could please hit that subscribe button and let's check out this first tattoo sent in by Anthony R. All right, so Anthony R sent in this Pikachu tattoo that looks like he's going through a time portal and has some sort of like snot coming out of him. Can I say something? Say whatever you want. It looks like his thunder shock is <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call thunder shots in the biz. I didn't really notice it at first, but it does look like he's been uh... eating a lot of Krabby Patties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's fat. He is. That's a thick boy Pokemon. Yeah. Thick boy Pikachu. I think he mentioned he was a thick boy. Yeah, fatty Pikachu. So, on purpose. I feel like if you're going to make a fat Pikachu on purpose, maybe it should be fatter. Yeah, right. It might have been more noticeable in the stencil, but it, it, with the curvature of the arm, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I can tell he's got the thunder thighs. <laughs> he does have some thunder thighs. It looks like he's a water type. I mean, I don't know shit about Pokemon. I know this is I Pikachu. Do. Yeah. So maybe we'll leave this one up to you. You said it looks like a water type? Yeah, it looks like water's coming out of his cheeks. Like he's laughing too hard while his mouth's <laughs> full of drink. <laughs> I mean, it does look a lot like water. I, I think that's supposed to be electricity, right? Yeah. I would assume. Well, is that a Pokeball? Oh, it might be. Yeah, a little Pokeball on the side, because it's probably Gengar, maybe. That's kind of cool. If we start with the outlines, the outlines aren't bad. No, some of them are actually good. Like this one, this one on the belly here is not bad. I like that it tapers off. Yeah, it's really smooth and consistent. I'm not the biggest fan of like the line on the top. I think it kind of tapers uh, off too soon. Yeah. Same thing around the ears. It feels a little inconsistent. A lot of the smaller line weights are a little janky, you know? A uh, little circle bump here. Not like terrible, but when, when it's zoomed in, you can really see what's going on. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on with the same like green warp that both of these tattoos have. It seems like that's like a, an ongoing yeah, theme. Like a, yeah, I don't even hate it, but the lines here are kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I'm not like a, a color person as much, but I don't even like mind the mag drags and the green and, and stuff. Right. If you're consistent with it. Um, but there's also, there's the lines in the background. Yeah. Which kind of brings the background forward. Right. Especially when it's just in that one area, it's not, yeah. you know, on the backside or anything. So maybe it gives it some movement. Maybe he started to do it and he was like, that was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. The, the background's definitely giving me Rick and Morty vibes. Yeah. As far as the saturation goes, um, I mean, again, not bad, but I do think there are lots of holidays running throughout the entire thing. What's this weird shadow over here? I think that's from the electric. From the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm only saying it's from the electric because it's on the other side, but, or whatever oh, you call yeah, it. Oh, yeah, there is one here. I would just abandon those shadows, I think. Yeah, completely unnecessary. Yeah. The white highlight's a little bit bloody. I probably would have waited a bit to take a photo or maybe use some kind of sterison or something like that to get that redness out of there. The one line I am questioning, and it could just be a glare, but it looks like it was kind of dug in a bit under his left cheek. Yeah, it'd be a rough heel. Could be, yeah. Uh, it is very interesting on the tail. You've got this super fat outline on the bottom and a thin line on top, and I see a lot of tattooers doing that, but uh, I'm just not personally a fan of it. Yeah, I think Pikachu has some thick black in his tail. But the line weights could have been the same, right? Yeah, because it's confusing. It should be obvious, like, oh, like half the tail is, you know, a black color. Nah, because then under his, like in his groin, or her. Or her. That's also very thick. Yeah, and I, again, I would have liked to, to see a better use of line weight, you know, thicker outlines in the front, around the front arm, and leave a thin outline uh, on the back arm, and just a, a nice thick outline around the entire perimeter overall. Just leave those smaller lines for the facial details and fingers and, and whatnot. Yeah, because I think I think there's some areas that it was done well. Yeah. Which we pointed out in the beginning. Like over here, kind of by the belly, the tapers look nice. You know, underneath is looking a little too thick. I, I think it, even around the face and the head, the line weights are good. Yeah. Oh, Maybe yeah. it's not the perfect taper or balance, but right. as far as just line weights. But I don't know. I mean, I might be completely wrong, but with this like color piece, I feel like the things that are being pushed back, like I guess this tail, which I probably would have left in front of the foot, but like this area and the hand, you know, I, 
I would make them a, a, a darker color to like push them more in the background, you know, to create that separation. Yeah, the hand is a little weird now that I'm looking at it doing that backhand. Yeah. It doesn't really match the other hand. Looks like a wing. Yeah, it looks like a tail or a wing. Not yeah, sure. like a fox tail. Yeah, 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 yeah. What would you give this tattoo one out of 10? Oh, man, I feel like I'm gonna be harsh. Cause it's, I mean, all together, like we're, you know, we're nitpicking the shit out of it. But all together, I would say like a five. Yeah. I was gonna go with a six, so I mean, I guess you're a little more brutal than I am. But, but seeing a lot of like the things that were applied in this tattoo, I think this person is capable of doing a, a good tattoo. Right. You yeah. know? Or just, you know, trim some of the fat, apply it to the next one. I think they could do a good tattoo. I'm not saying that this is bad, I just, I think they're capable of more than this. Right, right, right. Because there are a lot of extras. We, we talked about the lines in the background, the lines in the ears I don't think need to be there. The shadows don't need to be there. So I think maybe they just wanted to give more than, you know, but sometimes simpler is better. And in this case, yeah. I think it would have uh, definitely been better to leave a lot of that stuff out. Even the white highlights in the belly, I don't think they were really necessary. But a uh, sick Zelda tattoo though. Yeah, I don't like that one. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, I don't really like this one next to that one. I think we maybe should have been a little more space. Yeah, for sure. Or at least like revamp this one and connect it to the background. Right. Wouldn't have taken long. I don't. And again, I'm not a fan of the confetti either. Like on the right side of the electric that's coming out of his cheek, it just looks like confetti or party dots. This and line is so unnecessary. These lines. Right. That's what I mean. Water. They go outside the entire tattoo. Yeah. So I, maybe they were trying to give that electric motion. It just missed the mark. Yeah, it looks like hair and. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dirty Pikachu. Bro, if I saw this thing in the wild, I would run, bro. <laughs> the fat, hairy <laughs> monster, bro. Dude. Yeah. If I was scary. battling with this Pikachu I, and it was mine, I would be worried about its health going out to battle. Yeah, you don't think it, he's, he's, he's probably pretty solid. It looks I like think he's been he a has diabetes. He might. Definitely high cholesterol. He would be winded early on. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, use Thundershock and it would just blow <laughs> out of his mouth, bro. <laughs> and I'd be like, not again, dude. I hate this Pokemon, dude. <laughs> so embarrassed by the other trainer, like, I'm so sorry <laughs> about this. <laughs> So hi, I'm sorry I just don't have a whole lot of good things to say about this tattoo, but I do appreciate you, Anthony, for sending that over. All right, this next tattoo comes from Ben Murphy out of Ukaipa, California, and Ben, you say you've been tattooing for about eight years. John, what are your initial thoughts on this tattoo? It's rough. It's, oh man. I would have liked to see bolder line weights. That's the first thing. And um, I would like to see the black used differently to help kind of like sculpt the piece and give it some dimension. It looks very flat. Yeah, it does. I'm not like an expert on this, but it, it, for some reason it doesn't look packed properly. Right, especially in that horn. And even yeah. in that little, I don't know if that's a horn or hair in front. It's a lava lamp. A little lava lamp. But there's not really any use of black shading in the entire tattoo, maybe aside from the nose and the green part. Right? I mean, you've got the hair obviously, but it's yeah. solid black. Like it's not a bad concept. And e even like this, you know, weird like eyeball, tongue, side of the face, it's like a cool idea. Yeah. And it, it's not completely off. It's just like different line weights and like better use of like contrast and dark shading could really like add some dimension to to these, these the eyeball and the tongue and like create cool like texture points, right. you know? Ben, I think you could have used some darker shading in the mouth uh, and then some lighter shading in the teeth and that really would have pulled those teeth forward. And again, line weights, you know, line weight around the entire perimeter and around those spots that are coming forward, especially around the eyeball, you know, the teeth in the mask on the right side. Yeah, and like using your line weights to separate things, like I would have put a thick line on the gum line, maybe, to right. separate it from the teeth, you know, or like with the eye socket uh, and gone thick around, which maybe you kind of did, uh, thick line around the whole eye and then some thinner lines on the inside to create that separation. What's, um, this is like a, what's this green thing? Is it an ear? Is it a Grateful Dead bear? Or a rat pink? Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I thought it was like a sunflower without the sun. <laughs> it's a butthole flower. Right. Yeah. One thing that I do want to point out that I think you did fairly well is making the saliva look uh, semi-transparent. 
You can yes. see the lines through, you know, to the tattoo, and it, it, it does feel, you know, almost see-through. One thing that could definitely use some improvement is the any of the points. Whenever I do something like this ear with a lot of, I don't even know what you call those things. Where pieces are going over other pieces? Yeah, like there's different like points going in different directions. I was never like a fan of that look. I liked it to be a little bit more like uniform, like right. nice looking hair. And I think there is a way you can do that. Like every couple are going in the same direction. Right. And the next couple are going in another direction. But when you just have all these like stragglers, it always looks messy. Right. You know? Yeah, and whether that be the intent or not, it's gonna look messy. Right. Again, to reiterate, I think we both agree to use a nice fat black outline around the entire thing uh, and in certain key spots, and also just use some black shading throughout the entire tattoo. I think you could have really benefited from using some black shading in the Hanya mask altogether. Right, especially in like the, by the nostril and the nose coming down. Right. Maybe by the eye a little bit more to make it pop. Yeah, a little more in the cheek. It just seems like you started to or attempted to and didn't go very far with it. But it definitely just seems like there's something missing. It's, it's just coming off a bit flat for some reason. But let's check out another one that you sent in. It's this uh, shark tattoo or shark sushi tattoo, if you will. I like this one better. Yeah, I think the creativity is there for sure. Yeah, it's a very cool design. Like yeah. it's a whole great idea. I like how you can see inside of the sushi and it still maintains the structure of the original piece. Yeah, I think my favorite part might be the salmon. I like the white striping that's in there. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. The rice doesn't really come off as rice. Where is there rice? These little uh, marks. Oh. I think that's supposed to be rice. It doesn't really come off as rice. Maybe I'm wrong. Either these are small chopsticks or big sushi. <laughs> <laughs> the lines on the chopsticks are a little janky. Yeah, and again, I think there's a lack of line weight in this tattoo as well. Right, like it'd be cool to see thicker lines on the top of the chopsticks and they taper down throughout the, the stick. Yep, and again, you've got a lot of nice smaller lines in here that run throughout the middle of the shark. So if you would have just maybe used a 14 or sculpted lines on the outside, I think this thing would have really popped a lot more. I would say same thing. Like I would thick outline the whole shark, create some separation from the chopsticks, which I don't think is a bad thing. I'd make the lines on the chopsticks a little bit more dynamic with that thicker on top, the thinner on bottom. Keep the thick line consistent around the whole shark, and I think it'd create a nice separation and also help bring the piece together a little more. Yep, and although I do like the pinkish red with the green, I think those colors work well together. I do think it would have been nicer to see a darker red when it comes to the blood. And even if you were to bust out a liner, and really dig some nice, maybe not dig, but if you were to really tattoo some nice uh, lines in there, you, you get some really cool looking blood. Is it backwards, the tattoo? When it's on their left leg, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think it can go either way. Would you have made it go the other way? You think that would have made a difference? Yeah, I don't like the face running away from me to the inside of the body. Like, oh, how do you see that? Oh, no, let me just do a split real quick. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just like to, it to roll to the out, outer cap, you know? Sure. I would have flipped the tattoo. Yeah, and I do think that, again, we're kind of lacking some blacks in here. There's a little bit in the tail, and you can see how it makes those lighter colors pop. I wish there were a little bit of black in the shark's body. Yeah, that'd be cool. But overall, really not a bad tattoo. I think the creative aspect of this tattoo is pretty great. Uh, but thank you so much, Ben, for sending that in. All right, the next tattoo is sent over from Jaden Olson. And Jaden, you've mentioned you've been tattooing for about two and a half years, and you sent over this. Well, well, well. We didn't plan this at all. This was totally random that you sent us. A f***ing castle tattoo. And this is what you do every day, yeah? Oh so I'm told. All right, you go first, Pony. Uh, well, first off, I think the placement is cool. I, I like how it's uh, on the face, going under the head, but I'm not the castle guy. Okay, so one thing that I like about this is it has a cast shadow. So that's this dark center cut. I don't think you're supposed to put a highlight next to it, or I don't personally. I can understand like with the contrast, but I, I personally don't put white next to my cast shadows. It's cool, it creates like a cool dynamic, and I understand what you are going for, but I don't think it really translates well on the tattoo. Like what I would have done, if we just take one of these towers, like the one closest to his eye, on this left side, so opposing the highlights still in the shadow, I would have put a thick line around these castles. Like I would have created a little more separation from the towers and probably around the whole thing because it gets like really close to the background. I don't know if that was the intent, but it starts to like mesh with the smoke, you know? 
I do like how you use the negative space by his ear to kind of like truly blend it into the background. I think that was a smart move. Especially since I, it's the same tone, That's that feels yeah. like that way, right? I don't really know where the light source is coming from and based on your highlights and shadows, it seems like you wanted to emphasize light source, you know? All I know is it's coming from the right. I don't know if it's like top or bottom. I mean, the answer is neither, right? Because you haven't defined it enough. So I would like to see you try to put it like on top or bottom. And this would create, like let's say it was on the top, then your roof or your top of your tower will have more light than the bottom. So like let's say you use the top right light source in this photo, you would see maybe even more white on the top of the tower. And then what it would allow you to do is on the bottom of the tower, brush up some black, some darkness. So it would really make this thing like dynamic. We'd know exactly where it's coming from. It allow you to add a little bit more contrast in certain areas, but I'm seeing this on every tower, you know? Right. So it just kind of, it makes it look flat. I don't even know if I would have done black. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, if, if, if you were to do this, even with that solid black, would you make the end of that cast shadow that hard or would you roll it off a little bit lighter? Yeah, right? I wouldn't at all make it this dark. Okay. What I would do is I would like know my line and I would brush off the line. So the right. entire shadow would be a fade. It almost looks as if you packed black in the whole area where I think that should be like more of a faded look. Or maybe you just bumped the contrast in the editing and it came off a little bit darker. But even if you look at these top towers, it looks like you colored in one of the triangles and I would have brushed the fade over the whole thing. Does that, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And would you have put the white highlight on the left side since it's darker on the right? Would that make more sense if you put the white on the left? You could, I've been, honestly, I haven't really been using white in, in my towers because it kind of gives it that metal look. Right, yeah. And a lot of the time, like I want more of like a stone look. Uh, so I, I do think there is a time and a place for a white. I use very minimal white in, in the towers and stuff. And you might only see it if there's like a moon or I just really want to emphasize something. But I would try without the white. You know, I would try using negative space. Yeah, I agree. My general rule of thumb for white is like a wet, shiny, or reflective. And like you said, the stone's not really shiny, it's not really wet, yeah. not really reflective, so probably didn't need to use that, and it wouldn't have made the light sources so confusing. And just one more thing, like with, I think it's cool that you tried to put in the rock texture. Um, and like when I'm building my castles, I'll, I'll use a somewhat similar format, like, you know, I'll have a bunch of rock texture, and then I'll have this like protruding ledge, and you have those throughout the tower. I like to change the line weights on those to kind of accentuate them even more. Uh, so when you have like a ledge, I will either put a thick line around the ledge or I'll do like a little drop shadow from it uh, just to emphasize that it's something different. I noticed you did different shading for your shadow on those ledges and I think the difference is too much. Like the ledge is very light compared to the, the cast shadow that you have. I would have those a little closer because with this, this type of lighting, it's almost as if you, your ledge like really comes far out, you know? Right, right. How do you feel about how some of the towers like in the background kind of uh, the line weight's not as strong so it kind of pushes that back? I mean, I don't hate it. A lot of times like when I do that, I'll use a thinner line than I've been using or no line at all. Right. And like in, in this case, I would have done almost solid black top and fade out the whole thing, which maybe you try to do, but I, I try to make it an intentional fade. Like it is black at the top of these little background towers and then it fades out to like a medium gray, maybe even to a light gray to show that they're kind of vanishing, they're in the distance. They're a little too dark here where they still create a presence and almost feel like in the forefront. Yeah, I probably would have strengthened up that line on the left side as well on the very left tower. It just feels a little weak, especially for being a tower that's up front. Yeah, I mean, heads are, heads are difficult to tattoo. I would have put a thick line right on the face. You know, yeah, absolutely. A lot of times these things can fade and you know do different things, but it's 
especially if you're gonna have like some kind of highlight here, just to have the contrast. Because in my opinion, this is a, a tattoo that has lines in it. You know, so cool. Don't shy away from the lines. If you're gonna add them, add them. All or nothing with lines. So I would have put a thick line on the outside of that tower. I like the positioning of the towers. You know, it, it creates this curve kind of with the head. But you know what? Like I can tell like this tower is supposed to be in front and these are supposed to be in back. So the ones that are, it seems like this one on the far right is in the front, this one on the far left is the next one, and then middle left, and then finally in the background is top right. I would have made top right the darkest. Yeah. You know? And then lighter as we came up. Yeah, and in more detail, right? The yeah. closer you get, the more detail you're gonna see. Right, so I think like you have some of these beginning steps down. So like if you had the tattoo where it is now, I would go take a break, you know, eat, smoke, whatever you have to do, and I'd come back and there's still an hour or two left on this tattoo. By just taking your mag or whatever shader you use and brushing over that back tower, push it back, brush a little over the middle of the tower and start like repositioning some of the depth and field like of these towers, you know? And I think you will benefit so much from this and, and really get close to that like wow factor. Yeah. Jaden, I think you're off to a great start. I think we went over a bunch of ways that you could improve upon the work that you're already putting out. Uh, simple focuses, like maybe not using as much white, smoothing out some of the shading, creating more depth with, you know, shading over certain pieces. The format, you know, seems to be great. We'll just improve a little bit upon the depth and field. I think you're close, man. Yep, thank you so much for sending that over. Real quick, I wanna take a break and give a shout out to the sponsor of this channel, Mad Rabbit. Mad Rabbit is a tattoo aftercare company that I've been using for quite some time, and I think you ought to give it a try as well. They've got all types of products to help you out with your tattoo. Whether that's during or after, they've got you covered. So head on over to madrabbit.com, fill up your cart, and make sure to use code PONY20 to save 20% off of your entire order. All right, let's get back to it. All right, the next tattoo sent over is from Tiago. And Tiago, you sent over this black and gray realistic looking dog portrait. Scooby Dooby Doo. It does look like Scooby Doo. I like the black background though. Yeah, the black background really isn't bad. Usually I'm not the biggest fan of that, but I think they had a nice fade out on the sides, on the top. It looks really soft. It looks in there. Um, not opposed to that whatsoever. And it really does bring out the highlights in the dog's face. Yeah, you can tell everything was done with a mag. Yeah, everything's done with a mag, except for maybe some finer details here and there, maybe around the nostril. I like the collar. Yeah, I'll say the collar might be my favorite part. Personally, myself, I struggle with uh, texture and fur. I think it's very difficult. I think I may do it well, but uh, that's the hardest part of a tattoo to me. I think overall, like I like the tattoo. It definitely does not have like a hyper realism feel to it. It's kind of just like a smooth, like, yeah, you know, it looks like a dog, definitely. I wouldn't say, you know, we're showing off any texture points. Right. Which isn't a bad thing, it's just this person's style. You know, I am wowed when they show the hair. And a way that works, a way to kind of show hair, but also not having to like deep dive into really breaking down those textures, you know? Because I see mostly shading, uh, and then sometimes at the end of the shading, we'll see like little cuts or rivets, and it's like, oh yeah, that's hair. You know, you kind of put piece that together with the dog. Some of the texture points are, it looks like you just turned the mag on the side, like cuts almost. That's exactly what I was gonna say you in know? the face right there, yeah. So not the biggest fan of those. I think the fur that you captured in the neck is a lot better and a lot more controlled. Yeah. Maybe you got a little more tired up here in the top, but uh, I think the bottom half of this tattoo uh, kind of trumps the top part of the tattoo. Well, it's kind of risky. I mean, have you, have you, you've done some of these pet portraits, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> You've done a pet portrait or two, right? Yeah. It's like you're making these decisions as you're going through it. You're starting at the bottom and you're like, am I really gonna put every fucking hair in this thing, <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. And it, I don't know, maybe you, no, it, I, I would say it's consistent enough where you probably knew what you were going to do. And also, I know, typically these dogs do have short hair, but you can still see it in there. It's always like, I don't have too much issue putting the hair like here, but yeah. once you get to like here, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, all right, I gotta difficult. be careful with what I do. Yeah, because there's you a lot know? of different directions and flow going on, especially around the eyes. You know, it starts one way and ends right, up going another right. way. Uh, the hair in the muzzle, I think, gives off that fur texture very well. Right. But like, like you said, it's just the, the texture and the mag lines on the side. Mm. I think you played it safe. I don't think it looks bad. 
but I, I would be curious to see like a little more detail added mm -hmm. cause, because if you're capable of this, you know, I think you did a good tattoo. So maybe take, how would we take it to the next level? Could we show some more hair texture, some more hair points, spend a little bit more time nose up, you know, right, and the right, eyes right. and stuff. And like, can we show these like calyx and like, uh, uh, competing directions with fur, you know, as it curls around the eyes and in the brows. It, it would be nice to see that. Yeah, because that's what's impressive to me when people can really nail those and it's not just a shade that gives the shape, you know? Right. And the texture in the fur is what, uh, I don't know, what, what really blows people's minds, or my mind anyway. Yeah. Uh, I do think you could have benefited from a three round liner for the whiskers instead of, kind of looks like a mag or a round shader maybe. Yeah, look at this lonely whisker. Right, that's about the that only solid one. one. The other ones down here, I think those are whiskers, but they just feel too thick for my personal taste. They get lost with the attempt in the hair texture as well. Right. I mean, we're really, or I'm really nitpicking here with that. I even like the bottom of it, how it's faded off. I don't know what it is, if he's wearing a kilt or something, but <laughs> it's pretty sick. Yeah, same, and even the yeah, threading in that, that collar. Uh, is okay. that like a little plaid. service dog thing? Plaid shirt, could be. Plaid shirt. I do think the collar is the best part though. I love yeah. the stitching, the consistency in the stitching. I think you nailed. Yep. Nice solid blacks. Yeah, and I like how it's not all black. You know, right. it stays up into the dark gray. You can tell that this is a dark collar, but like, it, cool, dark collars aren't 100% black. You know, it's black mixed with dark grays. Oh, and, and that little bit of uh, darker gray that you have in there really pushes off the black background. So again, it kind of, it's that push and pull effect. Yeah, the black background saved you, because if you took this black background out, there's actually not enough black in the piece. Right. Um, and I don't know if that's just how the picture was taken. I would like to see like some solid black here. Mm -hmm. um, a little more in the nose maybe. Absolutely in the nose. In the eyes, thought. you know? Cause you can see like this was the left side of the nose. There was that shadow brushed over, which is awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. But maybe the whole side of that nose could have used that brush. Yep. You know? And I don't some know more where texture. the fucking light is. Right. It looks like it's coming from the right and backlit from the left. You're right, absolutely right. Yeah, maybe even shading on the left side of the face would have brought that into the background a little bit more. Right. Um, but if you didn't have your background, maybe the edge of the dog face would have, would have been shaded. dark. Yeah. yeah. I think it could use shading either way, whether the black was there or not. I think you could have yeah. used a little bit of shading to you know, push that side of the face back. The nose, I think, could have used a lot more detail. I like how you attempted the uh, details with the white, but I wish you would have done the same thing with the black. That's great. That's a great suggestion. You know. Also, like, careful with your highlights. Your highlight is the closest point to the sun, right? Or the closest point to the light. And I know when you run black in the background, run it up against negative skin, it is so tempting to put white in that, but you don't always need it. Right. You know, because it just, I would have not put any white on the left side of the face because it really looks like the light is supposed to be on the right tip of the nose. Yeah, it's all Like that's where it's supposed to be. Cool, put it in the eyes, I don't care, have fun in the eyes, whatever. They're glossy, they're wet. But I would have kept white off all of the left side of the face. 100%. To really draw that focus point. It's not. It's almost not even at the nose, it's almost like right here, like on the bridge of the nose, that center point of the piece, how he's turned, how he's faced. Yeah, the ear does look a little flat to me if I'm, again, being nitpicky, the right, <laughs> yeah. the right ear. Uh, yeah. It just falls really flat with the way that you decided to shade all the way underneath that. There's not, I don't think, enough it's heavy like shadows. Elephant ear. <laughs> it does look like an elephant ear. Actually, both ears look lazy. Yeah, with the black shadow on the left. I think he got the eyes done, and he was like, time to wrap this puppy up. <laughs> and then just kind of rush the brow and the ears. Yeah, the top just, it, it's coming off as rushed. Like you said, I don't, I don't know if you got tired or how long you normally sit for a tattoo. It just, to me, it looks like you put yeah, a lot more time in the bottom. Yeah, you know, which the neck, was the it? collar, the shirt. We've all done it. We've all done it. John does it all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time. So again, Tiago, I think just adding a little bit of details here and there, especially in those focal points in the nose and the muzzle, where it's gonna draw the eye, I think you could have really benefited from those details. But thank you so much for sending that over. I give it a 6.5. 6.5? I'm right there with you, yeah. Yeah, I would say solid tattoo. Yeah. Like you could come guest spot, but you can't work here. <laughs> That's not true, I like the tattoo. He could work here. Soderman and Deadpool are part of a two same. Soderman and Deadpool are part of two 
same sleeve, the same sleeve. So the way, Jesus Christ, Suiter man. stroke. Suterman and Deadpool are part of two Suterman. Two same sleeve. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the way they end is all connecting to something. Regardless, would love to see what you got to say. You need punctuation, first of all, my guy. Right. Anyway, all right. The next couple of tattoos are sent in from Eddie Morales out of South Elgin Tattoo Company in Illinois. Which one are we going to review first? Spider-Man, Deadpool. Oh my God, bro! The Deadpool. What the fuck? Hold on, click the Deadpool, dude. What kind of funhouse mirror bullshit is this, dude? <laughs> it looks like that boy is trying to squeeze his head into that arm, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That boy flex? He, he might be. Everyone wants to do the texture, bro. Everyone wants right. to take their shot at the Deadpool texture. Yep. It does have some wonky shapes to it, and I think that's just because you w probably went so big on the arm. It's hard to tell from the photo, but it seems like you went really big, and that's what egg-shaped the entire head. <sighs> Looks like you're squeezing Deadpool's head, and the forehead is about to pop out, and then it has a shitty black background. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I gotta say, I think you kind of went a little bit lazy with the black background. It just seems like you put it in there to show contrast against the red, but you didn't really do anything with it. I think you could have pushed that black background up half inch, an inch, and really done something with it. So it's not just this black border. The smoke's sick. That was sarcasm. <laughs> I think the Pikachu tattoo is below this. Yeah. The one? <laughs> right, it's just shooting up on his yeah. face. The <laughs> eyes, the eyes are like kind of cool. I don't think they're done well, but I think if they, the design's kind of cool with the raised eyebrow and stuff, you know? But it looks like he is one wrong bus away from love on the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, going back to the smoke, smoke is very hard. It doesn't matter if it's a black and white or color. Smoke is some of the hardest stuff for me to tattoo. You gave it an attempt. I just stay away from smoke. Yeah. I think even when you pull it off, it's not really that cool. Yeah, it's so very I just hard like, to cool. I just kind of like get away from it. Yeah, I think this probably would have been better without it. And it honestly goes into his face a bit too much. It's kind of, you know, blocking some cooler details that would have been in the face. It would have been cool to see like a fist or something more like action dynamic in there. Yeah. Because it lacks flow. It's just this like straightforward portrait. It looks like on the arm. A lot of time with the arm, I like to kind of create like cuts and movement. Um, going across the arm, not like up and down. So even if you, you know, you maybe like, hey, I'm the smoke guy, you know, I wanna use the smoke. Like I would have done more of these like diagonal versions of it rather than this like snake body version. That just sits right in front of the face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it looks like he's sneezing a ghost. <laughs> Deadpool has this infamous texture in his mask and it looks like you did a lot of it in the nose area but it seems like you started to fade it out in the head and I think it's kind of an all or nothing sort of thing, you know? You yeah, started it, you highlights it confuse me. Highlights don't make a texture. A lot of people think they do. You know, highlights literally point you in the direction of the light. Use them sparingly. I mean, especially when you come down to the cheek because the whites are everywhere. They're on the right side cheek, the middle, the left side cheek, the top left, and even in the top right. So it's, again, just making everything a little more flat. Yeah, it looks like he's at a photo shoot or something. Yeah. That's his uh, glamour shots. Hmm. I wish I knew where this was. On what part of the body? You think that's on a top forearm here? Yeah, it's, I think it's outer bicep. Yeah. Or outer arm. Yeah. Outer upper arm. So again, I think the space could have been a lot smaller to begin with, and it wouldn't make it so egg-shaped and looked squeezed. If you made that face smaller and moved it up, and then used that smoke on the bottom to transition into another tattoo, I think this would have been a lot better off. Sometimes bigger isn't always better. But you did send it in a couple other tattoos, so let's take a peek at the Spider-Man. I like this one way better. I like this one way better. Way better for sure. The lighting's like cool. I think it could be done better, but it's not bad like here with the same like kind of cash out of thing. Yeah, but that's right where my eyes It's kind of muddy in the eyes a little bit. Yeah, I think the eye could have been cleaned up. My eyes are definitely drawn to that cast shadow that's coming down from his cheek area, I guess. Yeah, don't be afraid uh, to go a little dark. That looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. Even on the top of the head would have been cool. Yep, yeah, top of the head just to give it some nice form. Uh, the eye did get a little, like you said, muddy. I think that black or dark gray could have been a bit cleaner and then brush away from there. Yeah. Uh, but the yellow isn't really that saturated. Not as well as other parts of the tattoo. On the left eye, it was done better with the highlight on this in the center, I think. Yeah, looks a lot more natural. Yeah, the red seems saturated. 
Mm. Right? Even the lighter reds seem uh, very well saturated. Maybe a little bit darker on the chin because it kind of gets sucked into the neck a bit. Yeah. I think maybe you struggle with your medium and light grays because I think that shading could have been a lot smoother when it comes to the eyes. Yeah, I think you struggle with your medium and light grays because they look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you were saying? <laughs> No, they're hard, bro. They're hard to use. I know a lot of people that just work backwards because they're hard to use. Like, they'll literally start with their whites, go to their light gray, their mid gray, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's a little easier when the skin's open to, like, fade into it, you know? Yeah, I do think the line underneath that right eye, his left eye, could have been cleaned up a bit. Yeah. It just feels a little loose. Uh, the one on his right eye seems a little bit more clean, the one on the left side. The one thing I do like is that he kind of brings a highlight in a little bit more so this creates an oval look to the eye yeah. or like protruding look yes, which which it does and i like that yeah. rather than just like a flat cut 100 percent. a little bit of green in the left eye i don't know where that came from yeah that is put my own spin on it yeah because i noticed there was purples and magentas in there too and then with the green i wonder if that was just like grabbing some portrait palette yeah maybe that is something they tell you to do with the olive and magenta balance but I think the green's unnecessary. Looks like it's in this eye too. Yeah, I know it really does. And I, I just don't know what happened on his left eye. It just seems really choppy. So Eddie, I think it's clear that we both see improvement uh, with the Spider-Man when it comes to the Spider-Man versus the Deadpool. But I do still see some technical things that you need to work on, especially when it comes to some line areas that gray and green shading, I really think you need to clean that up a bit. But overall, really not a bad tattoo when it comes to that Spider-Man. But thank you so much for sending that over and allowing us to critique. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for the actual critiques for this week, but we do wanna let you know who we think did the best job. And I think we both agree when we say Tiago with the dog tattoo was the best tattoo out of the entire group. Who wouldn't you say, John? I would say, Pony, I would say. <laughs> I really think there's only a few things that you need to work on technical wise to really button this thing up, especially when it comes to the texture of the fur. Uh, when we look at that cheek, it just felt a little bit lazy and I think you could have used a lot more texture when it comes to the forehead. I agree, you know, we talked about kind of eyes up, not letting yourself getting bored with the piece and showing that attention throughout the piece. Although that doesn't make this a bad tattoo by any means and it definitely doesn't stop it from being our favorite tattoo of the day. Yep, yeah, again, my favorite part of this tattoo is the collar, the neck, and that shirt. I think it really did a nice job when it came to those areas. Agreed. So congratulations once again, Tiago, on being our favorite this week. All right, well, that's gonna bring us to the end of our critiques, but before we go, we do wanna shine a spotlight on somebody who we think you should all be following, and that is Sketch Brooke out of Orange, California. When I'm looking through Brooke's work, I notice she's got a very good use of line weights. Her flow seems to work really well. They're very creative designs and fun to look at. Yeah, you can tell she like takes her time with the pieces and the design. Uh, no area of the tattoo seems to be lacking or, you know, lazy, which I like. You know, even in the corners, there's stuff going on. It's, it seems planned, it seems paid attention to. Some of the pieces even have a lot going on, but it still looks nice. You know, it doesn't seem overcomplicated or busy. Like you said, it's fun to look at. Yeah. Absolutely. Like when I look at this little mouse wizard tattoo, I love the glow that's coming off of the star under the hat. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I love the gradient from the darker blues up to the lighter blues. It's all those little things that, uh, you know, really make the piece interesting and not so flat. Yeah, it seems like Brooke loves tattooing and creating and that comes off in the work. So everyone, make sure you head on over to her Instagram page that's Sketch Brooke and give her a follow and let her know we sent you. Slap that follow. But one more thing before we go, we do want to let you guys in on a little secret that we've been working on. John and I have teamed up together to create a whole new YouTube channel and that channel is called The No Call No Show. I'm really excited for this new channel and to be working with Pony and his team. We teamed up, we've been working on this for months, trying to bring you guys something completely new, completely different, but also relating to the tattoo world. I can't wait for you guys to see what we've come up with. So if you haven't already, head over to the No Call No Show YouTube channel hit the subscribe button. We will keep you guys updated on the releases of the new content and episodes. It's gonna be crazy. But once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.